assessment of mitral stenosis by echocardiography. Right panel shows the parasternal long axis view. Doming of the anterior mitral leaflet is seen well and has the appearance of hockey stick. This appearance is classical of rheumatic mitral stenosis. Paradoxical movement of the posterior mitral leaflet is also visible. Normally, posterior mitral leaflet moves posteriorly in diastole. Here, there is a paradoxical anterior movement due to commissural fusion. Left atrium is dilated. Left panel shows parasternal short axis view. The mitral orifice is seen within the cross section of the left ventricle. The anterior and posterior leaflets are seen in cross section and are thickened. The commissures are fused. Parasternal long axis view will give an assessment of the subvalva apparatus. Subvalva fusion may result in poor results after valvotomy as they can produce secondary obstruction beyond the wall. Parasternal short axis view is used for quantitating the severity of mitral stenosis by using planimetry to measure the mitral wall orifice. Commissural fusion and calcification if present can be seen well on parasternal short axis view. Transmital gradient is better assessed in apical four chamber view by Doppler. Associated tricuspid regurgitation if present can be seen on apical four chamber view which will also help in estimating the right ventricular systolic pressure from the TR gradient. Parasternal short axis view in mitral stenosis showing the fish mouth appearance of the mitral orifice in cross section. Normal mitral wall cross section for comparison showing anterior and posterior mitral leaflets widely separated. Scallops of mitral leaflets are also visible more clearly in the posterior leaflet. The leaflets of normal mitral wall are thin, pliable, non-calcified and open well in diastole with wall area of 4 to 6 square centimeter. Opening of a normal mitral wall may be reduced in low cardiac output states even without significant mitral stenosis. Echocardiogram in mitral stenosis showing commissural fusion. Parasternal short axis view showing mitral valve in cross section and anterolateral and posteromedial commissures. The wall leaflets are thickened and the commissures are fused. The cut is slightly oblique as a good cut should appear circular. It is often difficult to get a good circular outline of the mitral wall due to varying anatomical features of the chambers and cardiac position. Ideally, the smallest full circle should be taken to planimeter the valve area. If it is not a full circle, the subvalva pathology may be measured as the valve orifice. If the smallest full circle is not taken, it will be the valve proximal to the severest stenosis, that is the valve belly. A mode echocardiogram showing the paradoxical anterior motion of the posterior mitral leaflet in diastole with reduced separation of the leaflets. Anterior mitral leaflet has certain points marked in its movement C, D, E and F. The E, F slope is reduced in mitral stenosis. It becomes almost flat in severe mitral stenosis. C, D is a closed position of the mitral leaflets in systole and D, E is the opening excursion of the anterior mitral leaflet. A wave on M mode echocardiogram is absent in mitral stenosis. M mode echocardiogram in mitral stenosis showing the flat EF slope and paradoxical motion of posterior mitral leaflet. Normally, the anterior mitral leaflet shows an M shaped anterior movement, and posterior mitral leaflet shows a smaller W shaped posterior movement. The upper panel shows the doming of the anterior mitral leaflet in diastole. Mitral stenosis with pulmonary hypertension as evidenced by the flat EF slope of the pulmonary valve M-mode echocardiogram and the shallow A wave marked by the arrow. A mid-systolic notch may also appear in severe pulmonary hypertension. When Doppler echo was not available, M-mode of the pulmonary valve was an important tool to assess pulmonary hypertension. This is a discussion on the assessment of mitral valve area by echocardiography using multiple methods. Though mitral valve area by echocardiography can be measured by multiple methods, commonly used ones are two-dimensional planimetry of valve area and pressure half-time methods because of their ease of performance.
In two-dimensional two planimetry, the valve area is traced out using an electronic caliper and the machine calculates the valve area. Smallest full circle is taken as the metal valve area as larger full circles may be proximal measurements of the belly of the metal leaflets and hence not representative of the actual severity of obstruction. If it is not full circle, it may be a distal measurement or oblique measurement. Mitral valve area by planimetry on echocardiogram is usually obtained from the parasternal short axis view. It can also be obtained from the basal transgastric short axis view by transesophageal echocardiography. The inner edge of the leaflets is traced in mid diastole. Gain setting should be optimized as high gain settings can underestimate the valve area. Two dimensional valve area measured in this way gives an overestimate compared to that measured by three dimensional echocardiography especially in those with dilated left atrium. This is because better alignment at the tip of the mitral valve can be obtained by transesophageal 3D echo with excellent inter observer and intra observer reproducibility. 3D planimetry from the left ventricular aspect is the most accurate method of measurement of mitral valve area. Measurement of mitral valve area after balloon mitral valvotomy follows the same pattern. Measurement using real time 3D echocardiography is superior to 2D planimetry of mitral valve area in the immediate post mitral valvotomy period. Real time 3D echocardiographic valve area has the best correlation with invasively determined mitral valve area in this setting. Assessment of mitral valve area by pressure half time involves Doppler echocardiography. A pressure half time of 220 millisecond corresponds to the valve area of 1 square centimeter. Pressure half time is measured from the descent of the E wave in the transmitral Doppler usually obtained in epical 4 chamber view. PHT is the time taken for the peak transmitral gradient to fall to half its value. It will also correspond to the time taken for the transmital velocity to fall by square root of 2 as the pressure gradient is proportional to the square of the velocity. Mitral valve area is equal to 220 by pressure half time. In this image, green cursor measures the pressure half time of the mitral stenosis jet. In this case, the pressure half time was 163 milliseconds and the estimated mitral valve area by pressure half time was 1.3 square centimeters. Smith and colleagues have shown that both two dimensional planimetry and pressure half time methods give good estimate of mitral valve area non invasively. They found that pressure half time method is superior to two dimensional planimetry to assess mitral valve area in those who have undergone mitral commissurotomy. It has been shown that associated aortic regurgitation shortens the transmitral pressure of time thereby leading to overestimation of mitral valve area by Doppler echocardiography. An earlier study had shown that mitral regurgitation does not significantly change the estimation of mitral valve area by pressure half time method. Continuity equation uses mitral and aortic flow as well as cross sectional area of the left ventricular outlaw tract to derive the mitral valve area. The area is measured by planimetry and flow measured by Doppler assessment of velocity time integral. Proximal isovelocity surface area or PISA method utilizes the flow convergence region proximal to the high velocity transmetal jet in diastole. PISA is the surface area of the hemisphere at the aliasing region of the flow convergence. PISA increases as the flow increases and with lower aliasing velocity. To reduce errors in measurement, smaller aliasing velocity must be set to get higher PISA measurement with lower chance for errors. If the flow convergence is not a true hemisphere, the angle subtended by the flow convergence at the orifice must be measured and divided by 180 to get a correction factor. The diastolic flow rate is calculated as follows. Mitral flow is equal to 2 pi r squared into angle alpha divided by 180 into aliasing velocity. R is the maximal radius of the flow convergence region in early diastole measured on the central line of the flow convergence region. V alias aliasing velocity 
alpha by 180 correction factor accounting for the angle alpha between the mitral leaflets. Mitral valve area is then determined by dividing maximal diastolic flow rate by peak continuous wave Doppler velocity of mitral inflow that is Vmax. PISA method is based on the same principle as the continuity equation. It has been shown to be accurate and reproducible. Proximal flow convergence can be easily visualized. Wilkins echocardiographic score for mitral stenosis. Wilkins echocardiographic score for mitral stenosis is useful for deciding whether the valve is suitable for balloon mitral valvotomy. The score was developed based on the first 22 patients who underwent balloon mitral valvotomy at their center. Four parameters considered in Wilkins score are leaflet mobility, leaflet thickening, leaflet calcification, and subvalvar apparatus. Each parameter is graded 1 to 4 depending on the severity. Total score possible is 16. A score up to 8 is considered ideal for BMV. When the score is higher, the chance of significant mitral regurgitation as a complication of BMV is more likely. Regarding mobility, in grade 1, leaflet is highly mobile with only leaflet tip movement restricted. In grade 4, there is minimal or no movement. Other grades are in between. On the thickness aspect, leaflet thickness is near normal 4 to 5 mm in grade 1. In grade 4, there is considerable thickening of whole leaflet 8 to 10 mm or more. Grade 2 and 3 are in between. In grade 1 for calcification, there is only a single area of echo brightness. In grade 4, there is extensive brightness throughout most of the leaflet tissue. Intermediate grades are in between. Grade 1 for subvalva thickening is just a single area of increased echo brightness. In grade 4, there is extensive thickening and shortening of all caudal structures down to the papillary muscles. Patterns in between are seen for other grades. Various other 2D echo based scoring systems have been proposed later for the assessment of the mitral wall. These were Chen score, Reed score, Nobuyoshi score and Komiya score. With the onset of 3D echocardiography, scores based on 3D echo has also been proposed. 3D grading might overcome the difficulty in differentiating between calcification and nodular fibrosis. Discussion on low gradient severe mitral stenosis. Usually mitral stenosis is associated with high transmital gradients. Low gradient severe mitral stenosis has been defined as mean transmetal gradient less than 10 mm of mercury in patients with mitral valve area less than or equal to 1.5 square centimeter. A low flow subgroup has been defined with left ventricular stroke volume index less than or equal to 35 ml per meter squared. In a study of 101 patients with severe rheumatic mitral stenosis who underwent balloon valvuloplasty, Low gradient was present in 55 patients and low flow low gradient in 11 patients. Low flow low gradient mitral stenosis patients were older, had higher rates of atrial fibrillation, arterial afterload, subvalvar thickening and decreased left ventricular compliance compared to high gradient mitral stenosis. 40% of those with low gradient mitral stenosis did not have symptomatic benefit compared to 18% with high gradient after valvuloplasty. European Association of Echocardiography and American Society of Echocardiography recommendation in 2009 had defined severe mitral stenosis as valve area less than 1 square centimeter. 2014 HAACC guideline defines severe mitral stenosis as valve area less than or equal to 1.5 square centimeter. An earlier study of 180 patients who underwent percutaneous balloon mitral valvuloplasty found 36 patients with transmetal gradient less than or equal to 10 mm of mercury. 24 of these 36 patients had reduced left ventricular ejection fraction. Those with reduced left ventricular ejection fraction were noted to have left ventricular wall motion abnormalities on ventriculography. Balloon valvuloplasty did not significantly improve 
symptoms in those who had pre procedure left ventricular ejection fraction less than or equal to 35%. A similar study in patients undergoing mitral wall replacement for very severe mitral stenosis has been done by Cho and Associates. Among 140 patients who underwent mitral wall replacement for pure valvular mitral stenosis with valve area less than or equal to 1 square centimeter by planimetry, low gradient of less than 10 millimeters of mercury was noted in 82 patients. Low gradient patients were older and more likely to have diabetes mellitus, atrial fibrillation and female gender. Their left atrial volume index was larger and left ventricular strain during isovolumic relaxation was lower. Percentage reduction of left atrial volume index after mitral wall replacement was also smaller. Even though preoperative functional class was similar, persistent symptoms after mitral wall replacement were more common in the low gradient group.